What's up guys? Alright, this is the second time I'm filming this video. First time it seemed like the audio is not syncing with the video, and I hate that. So, I'm at school right now in this tiny little room, and I wanted to, first of all, share with my lunch, share with you guys my lunch. And second of all, I want to hit a topic that's kind of come up in the YouTube community a little bit these past couple days, and that's whether or not you should take a break from your pre-workout supplements. So first off, I have already, it's only 11 o'clock, so I've already had um, a banana today, and a Greek yogurt and plenty of water. Always stay hydrated, guys. And what I'm about to have, this is what I really wanted to show you, is this little Starkist Tuna Creation Sweet and Spicy. I've heard it's really good by some fellow bodybuilders. Um, and it's, it's only 90 calories for this little package, and it's got 16 grams of protein in it. And you can just go to town on this. I just brought a fork. I'm about to eat this, and like, whenever I'm done with this, I'll let you guys know how it is. But, um... I've had, I haven't eaten much today, but um, this is just the start. Um, so now on to the major topic, taking a break from your pre-workouts. I know not everyone uses a pre-workout, but this is definitely for you if you do or if you're thinking about it. So I use Jekyll and Hyde um, as a stack. So they're both two different workout pre-workouts, and um, Jekyll is kind of less strong and Hyde is pretty crazy. So for me... I don't really take pre-workout um, breaks, at least not very long breaks. I mean, if I go out of town uh, or it's the holidays, um, you know, something like that where I don't bring all my supplements with me and I probably don't have access to a gym, then I won't, um, then I take a stem break. It's kind of um, not on purpose, but it happens. Uh, you know, for example, over like Christmas, over my girlfriend's birthday back in January, you know, I was out of town for a couple days and I didn't bring um you know, stimulants with me, of course, and I didn't plan on working out because it was just family time, you know. But anyway, so that's kind of my personal take on it, or what I do at least. But here's kind of my overall opinion on the subject. First off, it, this has been addressed by the twins and by Furious Pete, um, two YouTube bodybuilders, um, the twins from Twin Muscle Workout, you know, repping, repping their shirt right now. Um, <laughs> they're pretty, I think they're pretty funny. So the twins said that, that you should definitely take a break. It'll fry your CNS. Um, the high, caffeine in high amounts for too long isn't good for you. You can check out their video. And Furious Pete admitted that he was a complete hypocrite on this subject and that um, he's gone for as long as a year without taking a break off of pre-workout stimulants. Um, but that he also, he also admitted that he kind of abused them, if you will. Those are his words. Abused them in college. He has, he's an engineer, um, engineering major which is crazy so he was you know using pre-workouts to stay up all night and to study and to graduate with this crazy degree so I think those are two totally different viewpoints and I think they're both valid and I will kind of share like my little mix my kind of idea so I do think overall that it's a good idea to cycle your pre-workouts sure it is a lot of caffeine and not only caffeine there are stimulants in them you know um, I remember on one on one of the videos either the twins or Furious Pete people were like well isn't that just like you know, the person that drinks seven cans of soda a day, a day or the person that drinks five cups of coffee in the morning. Kind of. That's a lot of caffeine. Although your average pre-workout has way more caffeine than your average cup of coffee or can of soda. And there are other stimulants, other, you know, crazy scientific name stimulants um, that, you know, coffee and soda don't have. So we kind of have to pay attention to those as well. And I think that puts pre-workouts on a whole new level. Um, so... What was I getting at with that? The twins um, kind of recognize that, and they think that, you know, you should definitely take a break. Whereas Furious Pete, like I said, he uses them not to only to work out, but he abused them in the past to study. So here's my point. I think that it depends on whether or not you need to take a break. I mean, if in a perfect world, I would say yes, please. You know, maybe uh, finish one tub of your pre-workout and then take a week or two off and then, you know, start a new tub. But... At there, I think there are so many other factors that come into it. You know, for example, someone like Furious Pete who kind of abused pre-workouts and took them or maybe taking them multiple times a day, I think that's where you start to cross a line. Whereas, you know, me, I take pre-workouts once a day, you know, before I work out, and I don't even work out every day a week, you know. So let's say I take, you know, pre-workout maybe five times a week. I don't think that's that bad. I don't drink a lot of soda, and I do love coffee, but I don't drink a whole lot of it, actually, um... Uh, I just don't. It's kind of expensive to buy on campus at Starbucks and stuff like that. So 
my main source of caffeine is coming from a little bit of, you know, one or two scoops of pre-workout once a day. And I don't think that that's that terrible. I don't feel any adverse effects, no heart palpitations, nothing terrible like that. So I think at the end of the day, it's best to kind of mix both of their views. And it kind of depends on what you're using your pre-workout for. You know, if you're kind of like me and only using it every now and then to work out, or maybe even only using it on days, like Chris Jones, only using it on days that you're really feeling kind of groggy and you really need that kick in the ass, then I don't know if it's, it's you know, super pertinent that you take a break. Although, of course, like I said, in a perfect world, it would be good to. Um, so I think at the end of the day, you kind of just have to listen to your body. Like I said, if you're feeling anxiety or heart palpitations or um, any other kind of ill health effects or something, take a break, please. Maybe see a doctor. Um, but I, like I said, I don't feel anything negative. And I'm not waiting for something negative to happen until I do take a break. Um, in fact, I wanted to share with you guys, I think once I finish this tub of Jekyll and Hyde or these tubs of Jekyll and Hyde, that I probably will take a break. And my strategy is to, you know, go a week off of them, and then maybe sometime on the second week off of them, I'll order my next pre-workout, because I buy all my stuff offline, because it's much cheaper. Um, and by the time that my new pre-workout finally gets to me, I will have been on a break for, you know, two, maybe two and a half weeks. And um, that might be as long as I can go. Because it's just, I think you just get used to it. I think if you can avoid a pre-workout, that might be, might be best. Um, I don't feel like I need it. I love going to the gym. I don't really need that kick in the ass, but I honestly do feel like that pre-workouts do give you that energy to make that extra, make that extra rep and to, you know, kind of psychs you out, you know, it makes you want to lift heavier and just gives you that buzz and it just makes you go hard. So, um, that's kind of my take on it, guys. Like I said, too many variables that go into it. Really assess your own, um, assess your own body and your, you know, your own types of pre-workout you take, whether you take a really, really strong stimulant kind or really, really, some, some pre-workouts are weaker. Um, so many variables. So keep them all in mind, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.